So it's been nearly seven years since the majority of us fought Alduin in the deep ends of Sovereign Guard and satisfied our heroic quest as the Dragonborn to come to a somewhat climatic stop. But the thing is, the word climatic and Alduin don't really mix well together and that isn't for any dirty reason. No, no, I mean it really isn't a climatic boss fight. It's actually pretty terrible. But don't worry, I'm going to explain well to you now how it is and just hear me out. I think you will understand by the end of it. So you will spend the majority of your quest in Skyrim training your character, learning about the world around you, the characters, all the different ways you can decimate things and so forth, but you will always have one main goal at hand and that is to stop the world eater known as Alduin who is a fire breathing black as suit dragon god. Alduin's prophecy is to come to Nern and lay waste to everything by consuming the world. It is told in his form of the Elder Scrolls and it is destined to happen, except it isn't. For there is a chance Alduin can be thwarted and that is by the Dragonborn, the hero of Son and Legends who will put a stop to the World Eater just like the heroes of old did. You would think after all the time you spend doing the main questline in Skyrim, getting to the point where you can put a stop to this monster, you would have a sense of fulfillment. The thing is, you don't. You never get that sense of fulfillment. Even when you do manage to defeat Alduin, not only do you get to be unfulfilled in the boss fight, but the boss fight itself ends up being one of the worst final boss fights I have ever ever come across if not the worst. But hold up, hold up, hold up one cotton picking second. What could you possibly mean James? You get to call Alduin down with a long forgotten shout next to three Nordic heroes who once saved the world in the Nordic realm of Sovereign Guard and you get to bring Alduin to the ground and kick his ass. Yeah, you do, but it's not like you can instantly defeat Alduin of course, but that's the problem. It's the exact same boss fight we have come to do and be part of during our entire adventure in this game. It doesn't change one single single bit. And I mean it. If you have to this day avoided the main quest line like a plague, trust me on this when I say it is the exact same fight as you have with all the other dragons in the game. When you first enter Sovereign Guard, you get a sense of mystery as an explorer. You are in this legend of a place where all the heroes come to when they die. You are even pumped when you could meet some of them, just maybe. Turns out you can. You fight a giant man named Sun to prove your strength, to cross a bridge made of some giant creature's bones and just look at the sky. You tell me another part of Sky that has a skybox this goddamn pretty. Once you get into the Hall of Heroes, you are greeted with all your favorite heroes around. Olaf One Eye, Kotlak from the Companions if you finish that quest line, and even the Greybeards leader, Jurgen Windcaller. This is a wonderful place, and I think Bethesda Game Studios did a fantastic job making this place feel like the mystical Nord Kingdom hidden in the skies. Even listen to the background track, it's superb. <laughs> Now, progressing through the story with the help of Hakon One-Eye, Feldir the Old and Gormle Golden Hill, you use the clear sky shout to get rid of this dark mist Alduin has left over Sovereign Guard. This is the first phase of the boss fight. Once you do this tedious task three times, Alduin will appear to fight you in front of the hall with the three heroes. Now, Alduin serves as any normal boss fight, bar the meteors hitting the ground, the same meteor storm he used on Helgen. He attacks you with fire if you use Dragon Ren to bring him down to the ground, he will hit you on the ground with the same bite attack, tail attack and breathe fire on you. Once you get him halfway down, he won't go to flight anymore. This is the final straw of laziness that truly made me feel Skyrim will never achieve its place as a god game above Oblivion or Morrowind. The boss fight with Dagon Ur isn't, it's just so epic, so climatic, so seeked out by the player and such a great villain that everybody who's played that game will love and remember forever. Mancor Cameron, technically the antagonist of the game in Oblivion, even even after you get through the dungeon that is his own realm of oblivion and finally fight him, you still have to sort out the siege on the Imperial City. The siege where Martin Septim literally transforms into Akatosh and fights this giant Daedric god while you are just standing there staring. This is the epic climax that both Morrowind and Oblivion have and Alduin just isn't something that can be there with them. It's a shame really because out of raw power by lore standards, Alduin would be the most powerful character between them but falls short in terms of limited gameplay mechanics 
graphics and restrictions brought by the creation engine at the time. I truly wanted to love this villain, but just couldn't. He makes an excellent introduction in Helgen at the start, but from then on out, the only time you will catch him is if he's resurrecting a dragon. Alduin won't reappear until so much later in the game. Be it yes, that is part of the story. Discovering what the hell is going on with this new found dragon crisis, but he's just forgetful. The first time I played this game, I didn't really care as much as I wanted to, and I am sure some of you watching this right now haven't even finished the game. I know that for a fact. Some people avoid this questline like it's the plague, and that's completely understandable. As with most Elder Scrolls games, the side content is always more fun. But whatever about Morrowind and Oblivion, Skyrim really takes the dump on it in terms of an anticlimactic and terrible final boss fight. Now, some of you may think I have been super harsh about this whole thing, and might be sitting there going, Irish, who cares, man? Just play the game. Yeah, well, no. Just no. This is a terrible end game boss fight. And who else is going to shit on Skyrim? There's a lot of games in this world with terrible, terrible boss fights, and that might be in terms of raw mechanics or boring gameplay or whatever. I will give you some examples. In the end of Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, uh, quite an old game, fighting Dracula can be exploited by using a particular holy flame spell to spam and wipe him out in a matter of seconds. And even without it due to the game's limits and how it was designed, he was way too easy to beat. Just recently I finished Ukulele, a 3D platformer and a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. And by god did I hate this final boss fight, to the point that it's left a horrible distaste in my mouth for the game that I don't even think I could turn it on again because of it. Capital B has six long phases to the fight, and while some of them can be shortened quickly by learning how to clear them out quickly, aka you have to die to know how to do it like ten times, the second phase takes the cake with just being so tedious to do. This entire phase can take you like five to six minutes to do, and if you die, you have to start the boss fight all over again, and there's no way to heal during the boss fight either. Resident Evil 7 has a final boss that is more cinematic than it is enjoyable and difficult to play, and it's just a shame. You are always going to have some problems of course, but these are a couple of bosses to show for example, but even with these, at least they are different within the game. Something fresh and new. Alduin is a normal dragon with a slapped on black texture, mind you it's pretty cool, a cool voice and voila, that's your final boss fight. The point is, we can't do much about it and now, and since the game is nearly 7 years old, but I just wanted to give my two cents on the topic and say that I hate this boss fight with a passion, but I will give it one brownie point. Alduin's death animation is still one of the most satisfying death animations I have ever seen today of a main antagonist in any game. And that little jingle of music the second it finishes is just fantastic, and the only time I kind of felt quest completed meant something important to me, it was because it is, because that death animation is just so nice to watch. I've literally YouTubed it and watched it like a hundred times. The only reason I will push myself through this is because I want to see that satisfying animation. But in the far, far future of the world of the Elder Scrolls, this boss fight will be long forgotten, and one of the things Skyrim will not be remembered for is this boss fight. But yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest. Anyways my friends, that's it for today's video, and if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Elder Scrolls content in the future. If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below, I always read through them. As always, I do hope you all have a fantastic day, week, month, or year, and I'll see you all next time.